Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi my loves, it's Destin Choice, a watching Choice TV. So in today's video, I'm gonna be eating a nice little snack. I have some alligator here, you know, just the usual. And I wanted to sit on here and, you know, enjoy my alligator with my Louisiana style barbecue sauce and basically talk about healthy boundaries and the journey to happiness. Now to make a long story short, let me just start by saying, I thought happiness was making a certain amount of money, achieving a certain career. For those of y'all who didn't know, I used to have a lot of imposter syndrome where I basically thought, you know, maybe I didn't accomplish so much. Maybe I haven't really done much. And I didn't really know it until Taraji P. Henson, someone, who I re someone that I really admire, spoke about how she suffers from imposter syndrome. A good example of imposter syndrome, for those of y'all who aren't sure what it is, is basically when you doubt yourself and compare yourself to the point where you believe that you're not enough, to the point where you believe that a lot of what you've accomplished was simply so easy because you just had things falling into place to you at the right moment, i.e. thinking that you're lucky. For example, if you got your degree in PhD as a, sci as a science major, you assume, oh, anybody could have done that. That was so easy. That's not enough. I haven't done enough. You constantly doubt yourself and your accomplishments. And when people do have the tendency to compliment you and congratulate you, you don't feel successful. You don't feel like you've accomplished anything. You don't feel all that great. And when people do tell you that you're doing great, you feel like you're not doing enough and you're not enough. A lot of times, due to the overthinking part of it, a lot of people who have ADD and ADHD tend to have imposter syndrome the most. And in most cases, it's usually linked to work, school, competitive environments, comparing yourself to your siblings, comparing yourself to your family, and comparing yourself to other people around you who are successful to the point where you start to doubt and believe that you even accomplish anything. And even people like Lupita Nyong'o suffered from it. A lot of y'all don't realize this, but imposter syndrome is usually when people give you feedback on your success and you instantly say, oh, well, I guess, I think so. You downplay your success. You downplay your achievements. You downplay all the hard work you've put in and you deserve every bit of success. But for some reason, you feel like you don't deserve it or you feel like you could be doing so much more. You also go to a point where you start to over-prepare, procrastinate, you start to become perfectionist, or you feel like you have to have everything all figured out immediately as soon as possible because you feel like you're competing with somebody because you feel like you're running out of time when in reality you're not. You should take a step back and smell the roses. It's like the saying goes, take a second and smell the roses and be appreciative of what you have now or else you won't get more. What kind of nerves did you have? Were you anxious at all about being able to pull this off? Oh, yes. <laughs> From the minute Steve called me, uh, until the minute uh, I got on set, I was certain every day that he was going to call me and tell me he'd made a mistake. <laughs> you know, I suffered from acute imposter syndrome. Because a lot of times, a lot of y'all don't realize it, but a lot of y'all probably don't give yourselves that much credit. Because think about it for a second. A lot of us literally look at the stuff you've accomplished, look at the fact that you've graduated school or you've made this much money, or you have this wage, but then you think to yourself, Damn, why aren't I happy yet? What What is wrong? Like, I feel like something's missing. Or, oh, thank you for the congratulations, but you just feel like you don't really deserve it. Or when someone points out something amazing you do, you just feel like it's not enough. But the truth is, you should really just appreciate what you have now because the you five years ago would be happy to be in your position. You know, somebody one time said a saying that really resonated with me, and it was, the 16-year-old you would think the you now was cool as fuck. Think back to how you were or who you were at 16 years old and wouldn't the 16 year old you be happy that you're a lot more mentally stable, that you make a little bit better decisions when it comes to friendships, bonds, and that you make a lot more money? Wouldn't the 16 year old you be so happy to see who you are now? So just appreciate what you have. And once when I was able to internalize that and take that in, that's when life got a lot better. Hmm. Um. Mm. I like the legs. The legs are the best part. You know, a lot of y'all also don't realize that happiness also starts with... It also kind of starts with, I guess I would say, setting up healthy boundaries. A lot of y'all don't realize this, but some of your parents are fucking toxic. There I said it. Some of your parents are toxic. Some of y'all have a toxic sibling, a toxic relative that you still tolerate. But every time they call you, you get so irritated because you're so annoyed with their presence. Or you low-key just don't like them, but you tolerate them because you feel like you have to. You don't have to tolerate anyone that you don't fucking like 
or who irritates your spirit. Period. I don't give a fuck if it's your mom. I don't give a fuck if it's Jesus. If someone is absorbing your energy and irritating you and you're so over overbeared by their presence or you don't like being around them, then put a fucking barrier in front of you and block them. Without healthy boundaries, you can't be happy. If you tolerate somebody that's negative and horrible and low vibrational, and anytime you talk about your accomplishments, they don't seem too happy, like they're always like, oh, damn, look at you, or oh. Like, you know those people. You know those negative family members. You know those negative friends. Let them the fuck go. Move on. And let them go because you don't want to deal with their energy. You don't want their negative energy or their negative spirits to be rubbing off on you. So let them the fuck go. You know, they're the ones who have to live with their demons, not you. You know, they have their own demons. You have your own demons that you're conquering. So set up that healthy boundary and let them the fuck go. It's better because maybe the distance will be good for both of y'all. Maybe y'all will cross paths in the next five to 10 to even 20 years and y'all will be cool and everything will be all love because y'all been able to face y'all demons, conquer and be able to succeed and live the best life you needed to. Every person that comes into your life is able to teach you a lesson. Each individual that you meet is meant to come into your life. For the sole purpose of you learning something. And guess what? Guess what? If you cut them off, but you don't learn your lesson, and you don't hold yourself accountable for the bullshit you did or the bullshit you allowed, there's a saying that goes, the universe or God or whatever you believe in is going to send the same exact person into your life, but with a different packaging. So they might send it in a form of a friend or a form of a spouse or a form of a coworker or a form of a landlord or whoever. They'll send that person right back into your life and that energy back into your life until you finally realize that you have some issues you need to deal with. There's a reason why a lot of y'all always feel like you're always attracting the same type of women in your life or the same type of men or the same type of friends who are negative and low vibrational and steal from you and rob you and never give you credit or the people who just drain your energy aren't good for you. A lot of y'all have those negative friends or negative people in your life who drain your energy, are greedy, they take, 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 and all you do is give, 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 give. There's a saying that goes that you can't get upset at people walking all over you when you keep letting them do it. People will take advantage of you if you let them take advantage of you. People will walk all over you if you let them. So one thing I've been able to learn throughout 2021 is that I didn't know everything. I thought I knew everything. I thought I had it all figured out, and a lot of us do. But then you get to the end of the year, you realize, holy shit, I just learned so much more. Trust me, 2020, 2021, those were some humbling ass years because I thought that I was leaving all the negative low vibrational and horrible entities in 2020 or in 2019. Bitch, they was they followed my ass in 2021. And now I can genuinely say that I've officially let go anyone that's negative, low vibrational, doesn't show me support, doesn't have genuine energy, and just overall does horrible shit that I just don't like. You know, I don't have anyone on my contact list that I'm cool with or fuck with or talk to all the time that I would view as a low vibrational person or an evil person, or a negative, low entity who treats other people horribly. And before, I kind of did have people like that. Relatives, people who I thought were friends, people who I thought I could trust, even though they were relatives, I didn't really fuck with like that. You know, I realized that I still had a lot to learn. I still didn't have healthy boundaries. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I thought I left all this shit in 2020. This shit unfollowed my ass in 2021. What the hell's going on? Like, why is this happening? And I had to realize the issue is me. The issue was the fact that I lacked healthy boundaries. And believe it or not, a lot of y'all who are people pleasers and you're always trying to please people and you're always trying to not offend people or you're always trying to be too overtly nice and go out of your way and you go insane when the person doesn't reciprocate it or you go insane when the person just abused you and walked, and walked all over you. A lot of times it's because you don't hold yourself accountable for your shit. You try to justify your actions with, well, I'm just nice. I'm just this. I'm just kind. No, you're just a bitch. You're literally just somebody's bitch because you don't know how to hold yourself accountable. And if they do use you or they do tolerate you or they do walk all over you or they do some shady shit to you that you don't like, hold them accountable and hold yourself accountable and realize how you can improve. And if you know better, then do better. So, you know, to see all this stuff and all these lessons that I thought I already learned following me in 2021, I was like, wow, I still have a lot to learn. So the lesson I have for everybody listening to this is if there's something you've always wanted to do in life, then just do it. You know, there's a saying that goes, you're the only person that's going to live with your regrets. You know, you, re- you should just do what the fuck you want to do because at least in the next 10 years or the next 30 years, you can say that you chose the life you wanted to live. And there's a lot of people who are living lives 
that they didn't chose. A lot of us are out here majoring in jobs because our parents told us to, doing certain ventures because our parents told us to, keeping somebody around because our parents told us to, tolerating that toxic family family member, relative, friend, or spouse, or husband, or wife because our rel- because our family told us to, and more. And you don't have to do shit. You know, stop letting them choose your life, you know? What's the point of letting them choose your life? Because when they're fucking gone and they're dead, are you going to depend on somebody else to navigate you and tell you, tell you how you should live? Nah, fuck that. If you don't really want to talk to someone like that because you don't really care for them that much, then don't fucking talk to them. If you don't really care for someone's energy like that and they bother you, you don't, don't mess with them. Even if it's a relative or a spouse, just move on and let them go. Let them go. And if they come back, then maybe it's meant to be. But if not... Let them go. Because you're only you're only postponing your happiness when you're associating it with, okay, well, maybe in the next two years, this person will change. Maybe, you know, if I just, you know, stop answering the phone for a little bit, maybe they will change. Or maybe if I just am a little bit nicer, maybe they'll change. Or maybe if I, you know, make more money, maybe I'll be happier. Maybe if I, you know, get this job, I'll be happier. Be happy now. And I guess it's kind of hard to be happy because a lot of people are fighting demons and they're dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety and this and that. But I sometimes like to go back to the saying. And I talked about this on my podcast. And a lot of people gave me shit for my podcast recently. Because I titled my podcast, Stop Using Depression as an Excuse to Be Lazy and Avoid Your Full Potential. And a lot of people got a little bit irritated with the title. But not that many people actually listen to the actual podcast. And I challenge y'all to go listen to my podcast. Because I be talking about a lot of real ass shit on there. Shit that I don't post on here. But overall, there's a saying that goes... No person, no problem. If you eliminate a person out of your life, you will have a problem. And that kind of goes back to the notion of healthy boundaries. A lot of y'all don't have healthy boundaries because you just tolerate people for the sake of tolerating them because you feel like that's what people would want you to do because you feel like that's what your mom would want you to do or that's what your friend would want you to do. I don't fucking know. Honestly, live your life for you. Have healthy boundaries. If someone doesn't really vibe with you like that or you don't vibe with them, then don't hit them up. Some of y'all alone don't understand it or don't believe it, but some of y'all just have friends for the sake of having friends. Some of y'all just literally have friends for the sake of literally having someone to go to the club with, someone to go drink with, someone to go smoke with, someone to just talk to when you're just bored, someone to hang around. But you know good and well that you would never trust them with your life. You would never trust them if you were to leave $20 lying around. You would never trust them for pretty much anything because you know they wouldn't have your back. You wouldn't trust them for shit. A lot of y'all need to understand that if you don't really have friends that are adding value to your life spiritually, mentally, physically, Mentally, why the fuck you have them around? You have them around just being negative Nancy's. You had them around just filling up space. Stop finding seat fillers in your life and just eliminate those people. Find people who deserve a seat at your table. And don't just have a whole bunch of random ass extras and a random bunch of seat fillers. Just taking up space. You don't need seat fillers at your table. You need VIP at your table. And that's one thing I had to realize that if I want to live a good life, I just need VIP, not seat fillers. Because if you're a seat filler, why the fuck do I have you around? Do I have you around for the sofas of having you around? Because think about it. You know those people who, when they ask you to hang out, you're nice enough to offer your time and say, fuck it. But when you want to hang out, they try to find an excuse like, oh, yeah, I'm busy. Oh, yeah, I got stuff to do. Oh, yeah, you know, I got to go grocery shopping. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, you, you know, you live so far. Oh, you live, you know, you live like six minutes away. And I don't want to be sitting by the gas station. Or... I don't feel like getting in my car. My ass hurt. My head hurt. My feet hurt. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I can't make it. You know, you know who those people are who don't really have your back or who don't reciprocate the same energy you do. You know, watch out for people who (laughs) reciprocate bad energy your way when you send them good energy. And who knows? You might be one of those people in this video that I'm talking about. You may be the problem. You may be someone that's horribly low vibrational, that negative friend that's always saying, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, honestly, the key to unlocking your depression is doing some shadow work or going through your spiritual journey, aka eliminating toxic people out of your fucking life. You have a toxic relative, a friend, or a family member, or a toxic relative that shit on your dreams, talk down on what you want to do, and never support you. Why do you have them around if they never uplift you? It's okay to let them go. It's okay to keep your distance. Just stop answering the phone. Stop going to see them. Just keep your distance. Just go far away. It's just that simple to be honest with you. One thing I would definitely give credit to when it comes to me having healthy boundaries is my spiritual journey. So I got into this stone and yes, I'm into crystals and stones and stuff. And don't listen, Bible thumpers, 
Don't come on here talking about some, that's evil. That stuff is evil. You're talking to Satan and demons and shit. I rebuke it. Bitch, your mom is evil. Nah, I'm kidding. I'm not. But realistically, a lot of these things like stones and things like that that carry energy, a lot of those things aren't evil. People just demonize it because they don't understand it. People demonize things that they don't understand. But little did y'all all know, crystals, stones, and things that carry energy are talked about in this Bible that y'all thump around. So Bible thumpers, please don't hit me with that. No, stay away from crystals. Crystals are not a bad thing. They carry energy. They're tools. The energy and power is within you. Crystals are just tools that enhance your vibration and enhance your energy. Anywho, I started using this stone called Moldavite. And it's not really a crystal. It's actually a meteorite. So there was this meteorite that crashed into Earth, what scientists believe millions of years ago crashed into Earth. And it traveled throughout space throughout many, many millions of years. So Moldavite is a very popular stone and it's been blowing up ever since TikTok. I had no idea it was even a TikTok trend. I literally had it for a while and then I found out that it was viral on TikTok. But overall, Moldavite is a very powerful stone that has helped me with my spiritual journey. And basically to describe Moldavite, let's just say that it's the most powerful shit I've ever experienced in my entire life. That shit is not even like a fucking crystal. It's on a whole other level. And it really isn't a crystal. It's actually a meteorite. And that shit literally uplifts your vibrations on 100. But the only way your vibrations can be lifted is if you eliminate dark shit, bad energy, and dark things that are holding you back. Moldavite just has this weird power of literally eliminating dark and low vibrational entities out of your life. Literally, once I got on Moldavite, I moved to LA two weeks after I got it. Literally. Like, I had, like, this sudden urge of, like, damn, maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I shouldn't go. Maybe I shouldn't go to L.A. Maybe I'm just not ready. Maybe I shouldn't go. I'm nervous. I'm scared. What if things don't work out? What if it's just too much and I can't just handle, and I can't handle all them Valley girls and them Starbucks bitches? What if I can't handle, you know, being too close to South Central? Oh, my God. What if I run into Menace to Society? What, you know, that was my mindset. But then when I got Moldavite, I was like, wait, this is what the fuck I want to do. This is what I've always wanted to do. What the fuck am I scared for? You know, I started having, like, these weird, vivid dreams out of nowhere the day I got Moldavite. And that dream, in a nutshell, basically told me, you're going the wrong way. Follow your path. That's basically what my dreams are. I'm not going to go into detail. But overall, Moldavite is a very powerful stone that I literally cherish with me. And I take with me all the time. And basically, it's a powerful stone that y'all should look into if you haven't already. I found a video that'll better explain it. I just wanted to say, if you were thinking about getting Moldavite... Yeah, Moldavite is pretty intense. Here's what it does. Essentially, Moldavite removes obstacles that are between you and the path that you are meant to be on. Any door that has a what if behind it, closed or immediately opened. That situation ship that you're in that you're not sure what you are, bye bye, it's gone. The job that you're thinking about leaving but you can't quite do it, bye bye, you got laid off. That house you were kicking the tires on buying, all of a sudden it drops in price. When these things happen, they feel like major life shifts and they can feel really awful at the time they happen. But a year later, you will be in a much better place. That's the power of Moldavite. And if you can't find one right now, it's because you're not ready. Moldavite will find you when it's your time. I think people um, need to know that Moldavite is not no bullshit. I mean, Moldavite is not something you play with and it's not something to just be trending. I mean, um, it's life changing and you know, you need to be serious about when you approach something like that. I mean, um, I can't tell people what to do, but I'm just saying, um, giving some advice. If you're going to jump out there on Moldavite, do your research, make sure you know what you're getting into, make sure you're mentally stable to handle, um, what it's going to take you through. Um, Moldavite jumps right in there and, um, starts dealing with some stuff. You know, you're going to start seeing your life change. You're going to start seeing people move away from you. You're going to start seeing everything for what it is. Of course, with any um, crystal that you use, you know, it's about intention. But Moldavite already knows what to do. You know, Moldavite already knows that you need to have these things out of your life. You need to focus more on these things. You, it will carry you to where you need to be it's worth it like i said a lot of people think that you know moldavite sometimes it could be it could feel like why is all of this stuff happening to me i thought this was a good crystal i thought it was a good crystal it is a good crystal it just it transforms you as a person it's like a what do you like a caterpillar it's like you're like a caterpillar and it turns you into this beautiful butterfly and no, this is not sponsored. I just wanted to put that out there because people always ask me what crystals I recommend and how I got into spirituality a lot deeply. So 
Just putting that out there. And no, again, it's not sponsored. But I can speak for myself and say that it's changed my life. But that's not what this video is about. Overall, if y'all want to buy one, y'all can go to moldavitefamily.com and they have a whole bunch of pieces you could buy from cheap little pieces to bigger pieces. So feel free to check it out if y'all want one. Overall, it's a very popular meteorite that can only be found in one place in the entire world. And just know these shits are going extinct. So if you can't find one by 2030, don't say I never told you to get one. And again, this is not sponsored. You can buy them anywhere, but this is just who I personally buy from because there's a lot of fakes out there. This is just where I get it from. I'll leave a link down below, moldavitefamily.com. And no, it's not just a rock. I'm telling you guys, if you guys think it's just a rock, I challenge you to give it a shot if you're interested. And like I said, not sponsored. You guys know damn well sponsorship companies don't like me. I don't get sponsored for shit. A lot of trials and tribulations, but a lot of those ended up being lessons. And for the first time, I can say that I'm the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. Because I'm just like, whoa, happiness is now. Everything I've ever wanted is literally right in front of me and I didn't even realize it. So if you're someone that's struggling how to, to be happy and struggling to live your life, and you're interested in stones that carry energy, get your Moldavite. It, it is expensive. A tiny little piece is going to be like $80, but it'll be worth it. And if you don't believe me, get it and come back to me in the next three, four months and tell me what happens after you carry it with you or you sleep with it next to you. But overall, I've learned that if you want to be happy, you have to clear out some of the, the baggage that you're carrying. And sometimes you're not just carrying your baggage, you're carrying other people's baggage. If you're in a toxic relationship, you better leave that shit now. Because then you're going to look back at your 20s and your 30s and be like, damn, why the fuck did I waste all that time? And some of y'all think that you're trapped in marriage. No, the fuck you're not. You think you're trapped. If you got to go through a divorce... And fall through with that divorce and live your life. There are so many beautiful things out there for you to see, for you to literally be wasting your time on a trash person who ain't shit, who's never going to change, who's done horrible things to you, whether it be a, a friend, a family member, or even a spouse. There are so many beautiful things out there. Why are you wasting your time on bullshit? And why are you wasting your time trying to chase people who don't give a fuck about you and chase people to be in a friendship with you or in a relationship with you? Fuck that. Life is way too damn lit to just be having people around for the fuck's sake of having them around. Let them go. Move on. It's just that simple. If you see negative, low vibrations and they give you ang and make you anxious and they irritate you and thinking about them and all the shady things they did to you just make you angry all over again, let them go. You know? And if you can let them go, you'll be able to forgive them in the, in, in the near future. But just let that shit go. Hmm. Y'all, I know this is random, but y'all know in my last video I said because of inflation and how so many people are leaving work and how the economy is shit right now and gas is going up, that the price of meat is going up. But I didn't think the price of alligator was going to go up. That shit's crazy. Mm. I forgot to do a thumbnail. Shit. But if you're in your late 20s, early 30s, or even 40s, understand that it's not too late to change. You can still wake up one day and make a decision for you. It's not going to be easy, but sometimes the negative obstacles that come with it not being so easy is to make you stronger. And also, sometimes when you want to make a change in your life or you want to pursue an amazing venture, some of y'all will get those slight negative thoughts and those doubts because of fear, anger, and something setting you back. But a lot of times I always tell people, and I'm sure you guys always hear the saying that goes, you are not your thoughts. You ever notice how whenever you're ready to get something done, or you're trying to pursue a venture, or you're at your computer, 
trying to get something done or trying to pursue something. And sometimes those negative thoughts will start kicking in when you're trying to pursue a venture. You ever notice that? Think very closely. Whenever you're ready to get some work done, you're ready to go to work, you're ready to probably apply to that school, probably ready to get that art done, that music done, start that business venture, start researching for a potential business opportunity that you know is going to work out or you know could work out. All of a sudden, those negative thoughts start keeping it. You know, you start thinking about all those PTSD moments that fucked you over or all those horrible moments that were trying to put, push, pull you back into that deep, dark depression. Or you start remembering all those horrible moments that happened to you when you were a kid or those horrible moments that happened to you a couple weeks ago or that one person that you thought you could trust but fucked you over or that one person who did you dirty but you enabled them. Those memories start coming back and kicking in while you're trying to do something new. And you got to like quickly stop yourself and say, wait, what the fuck? Why am I thinking about that? That has nothing to do with what I'm doing. Why did I just randomly think of that? A lot of times you just randomly thought about that negative moment specifically because your demons are trying to pull you back into that rut of depression. They're trying to pull you back like, yes, my precious, come come to the dark side. Come to the dark side. You're, you're not worthy. Remember what happened to you when you were a kid? Remember that person that tried to literally ruin you? Remember that person that was using you? Remember that person that abused you? You got to quickly just snap out of it and realize, wait. No, 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 I got this. I got this. That's, that's literally all you got to tell yourself whenever you catch yourself in those negative thoughts, in those negative spirals. You got to just tell yourself, I got this. You'll be fine. That's what I had to learn how to do. Tell myself, I got this. I'm good. No, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, demon. I remember that. I remember those moments. I'm good. I'm, I'm healing. I, I don't want to go back to the dark side. I'm healing. I'm going to pursue this venture now. You can kiss my ass and go right back to where you came from. And there's a saying that goes, the older you get, the harder it is to change. So you might as well conquer your demons, do things that scare you, push yourself out of your comfort zone, and do it for you. Be a better person for you. Not for other people, but for yourself. Do things that genuinely scare you. If it means making that move to that city that's 10 hours away, then do it. If you want to go to a whole other state, but you subconsciously think, damn, like, but there's nothing for me over there. What if things don't work out? Ask yourself this. What if things do work out? What if that move you made or that business venture you wanted to pursue or cutting off that person or cutting off that spouse does work out, you know? And even if it's not about a move, some of y'all are probably like trying to cut off a friend or cut off a spouse who's draining your energy or is never happy for you. Even if it means dissing yourself from them, do what you got to do, you know? <sighs> Focus on your goals so you never have to struggle. A lot of us have goals in life and I refuse to believe that someone out there doesn't have a goal. Yes, you do. There's a lot of things that you've always wanted to do. Because if if you don't want to bring it to life, then it's merely just a dream. And you need to just take your ass back to sleep. Because if you're not going to fight for it or work for it, or you're not willing to fight or work for it, then it's just a dream. You know, you're just daydreaming. And it's not reality because you don't want it bad enough. It's already yours. You just have to go after it. And if you don't want to go after it, then it's just a daydream. It's not going to come true because you don't want it bad enough. You know, what all you want to realize is, that person who hurt you in that relationship or that person who hurt you in that business venture, they're living their best life. And you're a prisoner in your own thoughts because you're so worried about what you did do, what you didn't do. Because that person might have fucked you over or you might have fucked that person over. But honestly, all you can really do is just move forward. You know, I always tell people if you're struggling to get over a random thought because of a person who did you dirty, focus on your goals so you never have to struggle. Because when you elevate... Those very same people who fucked you over that business venture or those very same people who fucked you over, you know, in your family or in your spousal relationship, those very same people are going to come crawling back when they see you elevate. Because the thing is, when good luck starts to come your way, you ever notice how when good things are happening, all of a sudden everybody starts crawling back, everybody wants a piece of it, everybody's like, oh, wow, I see you did that. You know, everybody wants to be a, a part of you when they see that good luck coming your way. But don't even acknowledge them because you'll, you'll be so worried about your goals, your elevation, and your glow that you won't even be worried about them. But I had to learn the hard way this year, the year before, the year before, and especially this year, that healthy boundaries is very essential to living a good, blessed, and happy life. Because you age better when you have healthy boundaries. And you age better when you're not walking around with a mask trying to please people. When you're a people pleaser, you're wearing multiple masks. You're wearing a mask to please your friends. You're wearing a mask to please your family. You're wearing a mask to please your mom. You're wearing a mask to please those friends that you really don't really care for like that. But you just pretend that, that you care about them because you feel like you may need them one day. You feel like they may come in handy. 
You know, you're people pleasing to make sure everyone likes you, but you keep you keep switching masks. Stop switching masks. Stop giving people access to you and worry about being a better person. It's just that simple. 2021 was a good year. I thought 2020 was probably the best year of my life. And I'm sure most of y'all thought 2020 was the best year of your life. Now that we're going towards 2022, think about all the things you want to do better in. And I always tell people, you know, it's okay to have New Year's resolutions, but as you take actions, because, you know, it's like it kind of starts with you. You don't have to wait for a new calendar day to just change. Just change if you want to change. Everything starts with a choice. All you got to do is wake up one day and make a choice. If it means you want to move to a new city like Atlanta or Carolina, North Carolina, or Miami, or New York, or Los Angeles, California, or you've always wanted to move to the DMV, or move to Philly, or move anywhere, or even move out of the country, then just do it. If you can get a job transfer at your current job, and you know you can probably get a new job because your resume looks pretty good, then just go for it. Or if there's that one job that you've always wanted to apply for, or you're just tired of your current job and you want something new, go on that go on that website or that app where you can apply for a new job. Go for that job that's offering that fat ass wage. Maybe you deserve it. Maybe this is a sign to go apply for it. Maybe you should go on a site right now and apply for a really awesome job that's paying you a high wage. Maybe you'll ace the interview. Maybe you'll get the job. Maybe your resume is that good. You know, maybe it's time to stop waiting and stop getting too comfortable at your current job that you know you can't stand. But maybe it's time to, you know, do another job that you like. Maybe you have enough experience under your belt to elevate. Maybe it's time to elevate. Maybe this is a sign. Maybe there's something you always wanted to do, but just never had the confidence to do it. Maybe this is a sign. But yeah, change if you want to change. And I hope everybody has like a blessed holiday. I don't celebrate Christmas or the holidays because it's low-key a scam. Because I am not about to run to Walmart to buy a whole bunch of presents for people who probably don't want to, who probably ain't going to buy me a damn gift. Or buy a whole bunch of presents for people who are grown as fuck and already happy with what they have. Or... Buy a whole bunch of gifts for the sake for the sole purpose of it being a holiday. Like I don't give a fuck about the holidays. I think a lot of it is tied to the fact that I never really celebrate the holidays as a kid because my family was never closed. But anyways, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. Let me know if you guys want to try some alligator. If you guys want to buy some alligator, I'll leave a link in the description down below where y'all can buy some. I know it looks scrumptious and a little crispy because I like mine's well done. But overall, like, comment, subscribe. Give your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, like I said. And yeah, enjoy the music. Choice out this bitch. I'm gonna swing from the chandelier. From the chandelier. I'm gonna fly all the fun night. All my tears are from the night. I'm gonna swing from the chandelier, from the chandelier. Oh, her, her, I keep my glasses on for tonight. Her, 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 all for tonight, all for tonight. Party goes, don't take away. No, I go down. I go down, down. I push it down. I push it down. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hold eyes. I got eyes. I'm gonna swing from the chandelier. From the chandelier. Okay. That's all you get for free. Album on the way. And subscribe to my Patreon. And stream my podcast everywhere. Thank you.